Welcome to the Bright Side of Longevity. Join host Dr. Roger Landry along with co-host Danielle Pai and guests as they discuss the bright side of getting older through healthy longevity. Guided by research, this lighthearted and educational show will leave you with practical ways to brighten your life's journey. Maria Genet is a dancer, choreographer, and educator. Recognized as a pioneering leader in the intergenerational, interactive, participatory, performing arts, and arts and health fields. Her national award-winning work to create interactive dance, music, and story programs for intergenerational participants is designed to tap into the artistry and creativity of older adults and invite them to be central collaborators in the artistic process of dance, music, and storytelling. In 2001, Maria developed the Dancing Heart, a nationally recognized evidence-based program which engages older adults of all abilities in weekly interactive arts participation and health education. It was featured in the 2012 PBS documentary, Arts and the Mind, and is recognized as a model arts involvement program by the National Endowment for the Arts, the National Center for Creative Aging, and winner of awards for program innovation by the American Public Health Association, American Society on Aging, and others. Maria is also an AARP Minnesota Pollen Midwest Leadership 2019 award winner. Well, welcome everybody to the bright side of longevity. I'm here with Danielle. Danielle, how are you today? Did you have a great holiday? I hope you did. I had a fantastic holiday, and John spoiled me to a very lovely dinner at a French restaurant. And Roger, thank you for the lovely gift card. We're going to enjoy some some Mediterranean cuisine probably next week. <laughs> Well, that's only a gift card, but what I would really do if I wanted to be fully demonstrate my appreciation to you is bow down. <laughs> and, you know, you make me look so good and 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 you're such a good friend and and the pool player and all that, you know. We have <laughs> been in each other's kitchens and I think that's a that says a lot. Anyway, that uh Well, that's good. Well, I am excited about today. Uh, you know, as a physician, I slugged through a world of left brainers and study and it, you know, and it was, it was good and I had to do it, but only, and you know, this hell, you know, my Myers Briggs now, and you know <laughs> that I really am a right brainer and being in a left brain world for all of my life, it was not on, it was not uncomfortable or unpleasant, but it wasn't the match. And so uh, I love dealing with creative people and people in the arts. And uh, we have one of those today. And folks, you've heard of uh, Maria's uh, uh, bio there. And we are so happy to have you, Maria. Welcome. Welcome to our show. Thank you. It's good to be here. Well, Maria, we first met you. Uh, Masterpiece uh, had an annual meeting uh, way back in 2018. It was called the Lyceum. A very right. great thing we called it, <laughs> and uh, you were there uh, with Kairos Alive, uh, which uh, is you know as a dancer and a choreographer and an educator and a storyteller. I, I think those are the kind of qualifications that would have been necessary to put this together. And I want to hear about it. So tell tell me what inspired you to start Kairos Alive, and uh, you know, uh, well, we're going to hear more about the stories from it. But let's start at the beginning. Oh, gosh, the beginning goes back so far, though. So the beginning goes that I've always danced and um, I, I and that I love moving through the space through space. And I want to say that I think sailors also do as well. Having that, you know, a, a big space to then decide, um, you know, am I how I'm how am I going to navigate? Um, through this space with, with, um, you know, um, energy with uh, slowly, quickly. Um, but, but as a kid, for me, it was just the way that I could communicate. And the way that 
I think now I'm realizing it was always my spiritual touchstone. You know, it was a way that um, when I didn't understand what was going on in the world and, you know, um, as a, a young kid, I had actually a lot of loss. And for me, the when I was in the music, because for me, dance and music are inseparable. Um, uh, we'll have to talk later about some the name of Kairos, the Greek name, but also the word orchestra is a Greek word for the place of dance. So that the the um, the Minoans actually said that dance and and music were totally connected and th and theater, dance, music, theater, storytelling, and and that's always been true for me. So um, my mom didn't think that uh, being a dancer would be a career that I could support myself in. And luckily I, I loved, um, I loved kids and this was when I was a kid and, um, and I didn't really want to grow up because I didn't mm -hmm. want to sit down. I wanted to be able to keep moving. So um, I started kind of, so creating my own creative dance uh, uh, programs. And when I was 16, my teacher said, here, could you teach the kids? Cause I don't want to do that. You know, the little ones. So I had my scarves cause I like dancing with scarves. I had my, you know, the records and, and I think eventually I got instruments. Um, but then I, I started sharing with other younger children, what I loved, you know, that, that ability to, to, um, to interpret the music um, to uh, find my own story in the dance and the and the music, and um, and so that was the start. So um, ended up I I was going to be a teacher because um, I had volunteered in Head Start and I had done this summer arts workshop for kids, and it was really successful. And you know, the, um, but I but I felt real frustrated when I when I got to college because it seemed like the people hadn't seen a kid in a while and it was boring and it was about sitting down, you know, and <laughs> memorizing. That's what it seemed to me. Um, I should also mention that I, I used to get in trouble in school all the time because, um, you know, now I understand I was a kinesthetic learner. I am a kinesthetic learner yeah. and the teachers would like sit down, be quiet, you know, and for me, how to learn is, through movement, right? And we know now that's embodied cognition. That was how I learned. But back in the day, um, we didn't understand that. We didn't understand there's so many languages um, um, and intelligence is is in, in many different forms. So um, anyway, I, I long story, I went to Europe for a while because I thought I don't want to be a in, you know, stuck in a, a school, getting kids in two lines. And um, <laughs> I found about this program um, in open education at the University of North Dakota. It was called the Center for Teaching and Learning. And um, I packed myself there um, and found this group of people that wanted to transform education, you know, came out of that progressive education um, uh, a line. And, but there, they liked that I danced and that I created these programs for kids. We we started our own kindergarten because they didn't have a kin kindergarten at that time in 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 uh, North Dakota. And I started a um a, a, it was a theater dance and theater company called the Locomotive Eye, and we traveled around to schools and did puppetry and and dance. So I just you know I just sort of made it made it up and ended up being in graduate school teaching creative um dance and theater um in in um to uh um undergraduate students and you know still wanted to to keep dancing and how to put that all together and uh ended up uh, falling in love and moving um to North Dakota of all things actually Minnesota Moorhead Minnesota and started a was in a dance company um there but I ran the children's program and then I ended up working in the schools in, in creative, um, you know, creative dramatics. And um, so that really allowed me to just um, give more um, sort of foundation to the, what I had 
come up with as a as a kid and then as a as a student and then um you know in 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 my own um exploration and but with 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 some amazing teachers in in gra at graduate school but i ended up um there was a person this is back in the 70s right when there was a lot more money for the arts and i went um i'm there was a a young woman who came from uh utah uh, it was Utah Repertory Dance Theater. And um, this was at UND at this place that I was supposed to be learning to be a teacher. And I started dancing more. And lo long story short, that was my my graduate degree is in, in education, but specializing in the arts. And there was a, a dean there who then later went to Harvard, uh, Vita Perone, who just... Um, supported what I did and other other teachers there too, because they couldn't do that. And they understood the power of um, whole brain learning, but we didn't have all the research for it yet. And I think that's what I was, you know, um, trying to understand and, but also experiencing and then trying to find ways that I could translate for, for other, for others. So started teaching um, creative dance as well as um, working in the schools, um, ended up being in Seattle, met another uh, fellow um, creative dance teacher, Anne Green Gilbert, um, and um, came back to Minnesota when I was pregnant with our first daughter and um, back in 1979. And um, a few years later, started a young people's dance company because it was what I wished that I had always had, yeah. but it, inspired by what Anne had done. So it wasn't, I was the only person in town that, that I didn't do recitals. I'm like, I don't do recitals because I, what I love to do is I create um, in collaboration with the young people I'm working with, we create um, dances um, that are from our own um from our own discovery and and creativity, not just practicing the same thing over and over again. And um, also when I was a kid, um, my mom had to make costumes for me and I remember it was a lot of work. So I thought, no, we'll just, <laughs> the scarves, you know, like, so, but, but um, so that was, so I had the, um, it's still going, it's called Young Dance and um, I'm I'm really excited now because it's an it it's really expanded, um, just as we all are expanding and including and welcoming um, dancers of all abilities. So um, young people of all abilities um, are part of um, the company and and the the classes that they have. But um, this isn't you know ten years after I I started it I I I kept on thinking but there's more. Um, how do I do it? I knew it. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, there's, there's more. And, and I was getting older. I had, um, children and they were growing up and I wanted to be part of that creative community. Um, and so I, you know, put myself every once in a while in, in the choreography and with the young people, they were, um, creating, you know, I, their own pieces. They did, there was a, uh, the, which then we highlighted um, one on uh, the Holocaust, on uh, the Black Plague, on coming of age, and and the work that I created. I wanted it to be something that that they were invested in. It came out of their lives. It wasn't just something that to look nice or look pretty. And um and I had lots of boys in the in the um, company, and I said I I didn't make a pretty dance for a long time because I didn't want to alienate anyone. So back to here I am going, um, what else is there? And I thought, well, I didn't know about Liz Lerman at that time. I did I had seen the picture of the third age where the the elders and and Liz are are, are, are dancing or standing, creating a beautiful shape. And um, but I thought I I love the word intergenerational. And um at that point, um I was doing my own as usual. I was just like, well, you know, I'm, I, I came up first with this idea of voices of the, my, of my grandmothers. That was sort of mm -hmm. the original title of it in that 
you know, how are our stories, how are connected um, through, through generations? How are, how is our, our dance? How is our creativity connected through generations? And um, so I got myself to Crete, um, traveled there, um, had some amazing experiences, especially in Zakros, where they're still digging up um, the, the, the remnants of this civilization that I think was one of partnership and creativity and of um, appreciating beauty and, and the world as a sacred space. And so that, that kind of, you know, how my, and my, my own, you know, um, discovery, because I, I think Danielle was saying later, you know, oh, I was, I guess I was about 48. I didn't really, I hadn't figured that out, but um, I still felt pretty young, but, but, but also looking for that, how I can continue to translate my, ex, my um, many years of experience of seeing the power of whole brain learning. And now I'm understanding, seeing the power of embodied, embodied cognition and how that children or the family members that I work with or the grandparents that I worked with in the creative dance classes and young dance would come alive when they were dancing. That, that, that I could, and the people I worked with, people with all different abilities, because as a freelance, you know, dance theater person, you know, um, I was asked to do pretty much anything. And I, I would always try. And I, um, I, I wanted to offer to people and to myself too, what it would be to have an intergenerational dance company. What, 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 if I think that that's an important idea that, 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 um, as, um, Peter Whitehouse calls about intergenerativity, you know, if, if, if I see the power of that in my life with these young people and in the dance company and their families and the grandparents and the the um, the people in the um, adult day programs, then then what if I had some what if I could create something that other people could also experience and see? So and I had just come out of, you know, that performance life that was always there that, that I was always struggling with because I thought it's not just about the people on stage, right? It's, um, I always have believed that dance movement, movement and music story is a right of us as humans as, and, and now I'm realizing many of the animals, um, you know, the elephants sway through um, the forest in ways that I wish that I could move. Um, you know, um, you know, I've tried to create dances about birds. Could I fly like a bird? No, but I, 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 I've tried, you know, I've tried that in my own, in my own creative life. So, so the idea of Kairos um, came out of all of that, you know, that um, being with children and families and teachers and, you know, some starting to work some in the, the health community. Um, but, but I was always against, you know, like, well, that's lovely. That's very nice, but that's not real learning. And, and so it was like, I wanted to show, yes, it is learning. It is the way of um, understanding. And, and also it's a way of heal. It's part of heal our healing um, um, in everyday life, but as uh, on the earth, you know, that if, if we, if we're dancing on the earth, it's a reminder that the earth is, is our mother and the, the earth, the ground is our ground and it's, it, it is sacred. Um, so uh, Kairos, um, which means it's an ancient Greek word or Keros, um, if said uh, with, uh, in the appropriate um, accent, it is means the open moment or when eternity meets the present. And when I started coming up with this, I was looking around for other folks and I had some alumni from the, um, from uh, that, from Young Dance, from the dance company, Young People's Dance Company. I met some Jungians and so they <laughs> were willing to kind of join. Um, there were some um, 
uh, older, um, uh, very progressive nuns that joined me. Um, I don't know how. And then I um, ended up um, going over to the senior center where my mom was going to the adult day program there. And um, this this takes me the next probably part of the of Kairos in the at I I thought well maybe I could find some older adults that might be interested, and and walking into this adult day program which which was designed for um, uh, frail older adults or adults you know with with uh, who are vulnerable, and I thought they were all just sitting around and, and a couple of them said yeah I used to dance but now it hurts and I thought. So this is back to my working in creative dance in the schools. If I can get sixth grade boys to dance, I should be able to <laughs> get yeah. chairs to dance. Sure. So, so that was, you know, I had this, I here I'd started this intergenerational dance company and we performed first out in a field in Carver Park at um in 1999. But but also that these older adults that I was having the opportunity to work with, I'm like, how am I, how is this gonna work? But what I found is that as people moved, even in their chairs, and you know, I just started adapting the creative dance work that I'd done, that they came alive. Um, I remember um, I was told that some people had, this was back, you know, 2001, Alzheimer's, and they didn't, they had lost their memory. But I was finding that it my experience that the people I was working with they would remember more after they moved or while they moved and and started sharing stories and we started trying to find music that they remember that that different people remembered and then I we one day though I was still it was like I, I was like oh tell me all about retirement how much retirement is how great that is. And they're like, no, no, no. And, you know, let me tell you about work that I have loved. But, but before that, I, I had come in one day because my older daughter, this was right before 9-11 and she had gone to, um, she was going to Ghana for the semester. And I said, you know how in one moment we can hold both joy and grief just in that moment, just in our hearts, we can hold it. And, you know, um, one elder said uh, he remembered, um, and now I'm, uh, this is, this is, we're speaking. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to audio describe, um, I'm reaching out on my right hand cause he could just move on his right side. And he, he, um, did a movement of drawing his granddaughter, remembering my granddaughter, um, holding her on my lap or, um, Elsie, and she put her hands on her head and she remembered, her, her sweet husband and how much she missed him. And um, Cecil with his hand reaching out and reaching my hand and putting on that on a rabbit headed cane. And Jack, now I'm going to take out my hand and throw out a line to a, a fish of a fishing pole and bring in the fish. Jack rem remembered fishing at Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And so from those stories of those very frail elders in chairs, I created the first sort of intergenerational piece called dances of the heart and and then i went to this group of kids and older adults and retired nuns and jungians um uh to um and ask the same question and then created this dance which this i'll tell you how then so we brought that to american society and aging in night 2004 and that's where I met Susan, Susan Perlstein and Dr. Mm -hmm. Jean Cohen. And we, we, we shared dances of the heart and these stories of joy and grief. Um, and we had a standing ovation I and it, you. <laughs> that was, but that, but I didn't, I didn't know if people would get it, but then they were crying. I mean, I was crying too, because it was so powerful to then start being and being mirrored mm -hmm. and, and there was an understanding that you can be old and beautiful, you know, but then also that you have gifts and, you know, Dr. Cohen taught me that, you know, we have gifts to return. And so that was the opportunity. And then Kairos kept going is how can I create these spaces, these experiences that where people can participate 
in art, the art making, and then they, and they can return, but we can do that intergenerationally that, that young people, little ones and elders dance and, and the adults in between, but we start seeing, we start working collaboratively, you know, cause that's what Kairos is all about is creating connection, which is communication, which then you care, you create hope, you create possibility, you create ideas. And then I think you can create health, you create well being. What a storyteller. Yes, you are indeed a storyteller. You, you know, um, we're finding out uh, probably uh, we danced before we could speak, uh, before we had language. And so this has, as you're, you're discovering, uh, this is very deep rooted in our DNA. Uh, we've, we've attempted to cover it probably over the years and since the Industrial Revolution where we changed everything, how we lived and everything but it's still there uh, and it doesn't go away that quickly uh, because it's an evolutionary thing and it's there. And, and it's like, you're um, it's like, you're an archeologist, you know, a human archeologist digging deep to, to the basics of who we are, uh, Maria. Wow. I mean, that's just fantastic. Well, thank you, Roger, for seeing that and hearing that. That's mm -hmm. that's powerful for me because, you know, a lot of times people have shook their shaken their heads and gone, why would you why would you do that with older people without who've lost their memory? Well, you probably uh, know the maestro, uh, David Dworkin. Uh, he has conductor size and he has a, a similar, you know, with the classical music and moving people, he has somewhat of a, uh, of a similar approach and has discovered things uh, similar to, to what you have, but your intergenerational, uh, we have struggled uh, in masterpiece and as a society, uh, only recently becoming aware of the importance of intergenerational contact and connection and uh, and you know we've uh, we've put ourselves uh, uh, in certain pathways where that becomes extremely difficult to do, and yet it's absolutely necessary. So, congratulations! I hope this is the be the beginning of a, of an awakening of uh, way beyond Kairos Alive as a society, where we we know that this is important. Mm -hmm. We need well, we need to move. Well, we're creative beings, and and again, you know, I, back to the elephants. You know, I've been. Really, I don't know if you read the article about you know that um, creating this elephant-sized marimba. This one artist has, um, you know, that we all. I think the you know rhythm um, and and sound are are totally connected. Um, and well, and one thing that you know, yes, and it and I think we are we are understanding the power of movement because we know now when we stop moving then um we aren't as healthy and um you know and actually not moving is not living right in a way you have we have we our heart is beating but but um you know when i st i started working um with a group they let me work with a group of people with Mid, uh, mid to late stage Alzheimer's back in 2005. And um, first they said, don't let anyone stand up. They might fall. And I went, okay, we're just going to be in a circle. Um, <laughs> and, you know, and after a while, of course we did, we're, we were able to stand. Um, I got to work with a group of um, uh, older veterans at um, the VA adult day program for many years. And, um, you know, we were so careful. We never had a fall. Um, we always had chairs. We always had people, volunteers. But, but I could see over and over again whether it was men or w uh, women or children or grandmas or, um, um, you know, teenagers that, when given a safe space, 
no shame, no blame, right? Safe space to um, create in and, and given context. It's not like, oh, it's back to the thing I couldn't do recitals. I'm not just going to give you this, this, these steps and you're going to do them. What, how, how is this movement connected to, to your story, to who you are um, what inspires you? And it might be just that you're doing a swing dance and we adapt it because that's what you did in high school and you loved it. And now it's kind of more like the twist. That's another great one. People, you know, it's, it's in them. Um, but the thing that I, I want to share that, that I, I still sort of is, you know, I mean, like, like both of you, I'm always, like looking for the next, you know, mm-hmm. how, what do I uncover next? And, um, you know, I wanted um, to keep on supporting people because I'll I'll work in communities and and start introducing this work, whether it's in a nursing home or an adult day program or in a school. You know, how, when I was working with teachers, how do I keep on giving giving them ideas because. So unless, you know, you've grown up in open education and given this, been given this opportunity to be creative your, all your life, right? It's hard to come up with those ideas. So I had heard, this was like six, almost seven years ago about Zoom. And I'm like, well, let's try the teaching on Zoom. And, you know, it was limited. I mean, Daniel and I were talking about earlier, earlier. I mean, Zoom used to be, it would just go off, you know, or you yeah. just wouldn't, there'd be no, no you know, it would just be no, it would just shut down. But, but, you know, once COVID came in, right, um, then things changed. And so when we had started doing some of this training and start, but we did have this weekly show and we had a, some groups of elders and then groups of some young people that we had worked with and they were willing to come on and try this. And one of my favorite groups is a group of um, Hmong American elders who saw us and then saw us on TV and loved dancing with us. Cause you know, but um, when, when, when COVID happened, we just went first, we were start doing, what is it? Um, you know, Facebook live, because we thought here we are in our living room, my daughter and I, we better keep people moving. But um, we, we just blessed the Bader foundation. They had given us a grant uh, just right before COVID, just to start this weekly program, um, and um, and because people were home, we had um, we had grandparents, we had kids, we had you know people in between, and um, we kept it going. It's called the Kairos Clubhouse, and I never would have guessed that I could that people would dance online with each other. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. it's not perfect. The best thing is the, the sites that we have when they have a big giant screen. And um, we've done it with our friends um, in Spanish at Centro Tyrone Guzman, which is the wise elder program. And, you know, again, best, can I be in the room, but it gets me in the room to places that I never could be, you know, Bemidji, Minnesota is a four hour drive from here, but I can be with the, my friends at the Disability Achievement Center um, every week. And we can give ideas, share ideas, for t- collaborate together, but then they, you know, can take some of those ideas and play with them at, a, at you know, the rest of the week. So I, we know that Kairos Alive is intergenerational, but it's also intercultural and adaptable for all levels of living. Can you talk about the personal impact you've noticed in the communities you've worked with, particularly in uniting different cultures, different physical abilities, everything? Yes, I'm one of, um, I think the chance, the opportunity always is the, is actually through invitation, right? So um, we were invited, um, number of years ago, and this is connect, connected to the, you know, the health research. Um, the, uh, there was a health organization in, um, um, in Minnesota, Medica, um, um, and they had taken over the Medicaid um, um, clients in, in the state. And they had created this amazing outreach program. And, um, and so um, they, um, they, offered that we had started um, part of our um, 
my whole work about how do we have this participatory art making rather than just being on stage as an intergenerational performing group, we started creating these um, uh, dance halls, intergenerational dance halls and with a live band. And um, we started first with accordion player and a, a fiddler, but then we expanded to live band and just, you know, and, and we'd bring, you know, there'd be kids from the, um, the, you know, third grade and then the elders and, um, you know, families that would come depending on the day. And, um, and so they said, well, why don't you try that? And we have some places we want you to go. And one is um, the local um, commu uh, community center. It's called Centro Tyrone Guzman, which is um, uh, the uh, Latine community center here in Minnesota, Minneapolis. And um, so we decided we'd do this intergenerational dance hall um, uh, they, we got this local band, um, uh, Malamania and had a dance hall in the parking lot. You mm -hmm. know, we brought our, um, we have a huge maypole. Uh, we, we brought that, but our whole, um, how, you know, how we work in this participatory art making, which I just want to keep on saying. So it isn't just performance now. It's like how, you know, in, in the community that we model different ways that, um, people can dance together, um, in with someone in a chair, someone standing, two chairs, um, with uh, with uh, a, a a ribbon, just all different uh, abilities, um, but yet dance is a um, is a universal language. Music is a uni universal language. There and and so we wove together this participatory experience so that. Um, the elders, I always say the elders have to be in the center of the community. Mm -hmm. So we will even create a circle of chairs facing out where the elders are uh, sitting and then we dance around, but them, but they're, they're in the center. And, and so many times um, we make sure that we highlight different elders. There was an amazing singer. I remember that day um, um, uh, who uh, performed and we all cheered and, um, there is a moment and I have to last not laugh now because they're dear friends and have I've danced with them for many years. Um, uh, Sol, who's from Puerto Rico and originally her family is from Puerto Rico and Armando from Cuba uh, danced, uh, danced together. And it was so gorgeous, so amazing. And I remember Armando later said, um, I came as a 75 year old and I left as a 55 year old. All right. <laughs> And so that was the, that was our introduction to Centro, and and through them we met one now our amazing colleague um, Vla, Vladimir Garrido Biagetti, who is a a Cairo, a Cairo uh, artist, and um, we have um, in person done many um, uh, intergenerational sessions with Vlad and with with the with us Vlad speaking Spanish, me and and Parker and. Tom doing English and um, working with the children in the Montessori program they have there, uh, summer program with the elders, but always finding ways like um, what's what are the elders teaching um, the dances they learned as as young people to the to the children. Um, long another story. I remember a sixth grade class coming to a, a nursing home in St. Paul and. Um, the the elders were teaching the kids swing dance, and mm -hmm. then the kids this dates it. They they taught they wanted to um, teach the elders the macarena, which <laughs> so <laughs> you know me back to my college days, <laughs> right, right, right. So <laughs> so in our with our intergenerational um um you know um, dance halls, those are that again that participatory art making. There's the professional artists in there, but when we're always curating the participation of the young people of the of the elders and finding ways to highlight each other, but always again with the elders in the center. Dr. Roger Landry is a preventive medicine physician trained at Tufts University School of Medicine and Harvard University School of Public Health. 
For nearly two decades, his focus has been on empowering older adults to experience a healthy longevity. He is the award-winning author of the book Live Long, Die Short, A Guide to Authentic Health and Successful Aging. Dr. Landry is an inspiring storyteller and presenter. His keynote addresses are powerful, entertaining, and optimistic. Learn more at LiveLongDieShort.com. Fantastic. Elders in the center. Boy, isn't that the way it's been <laughs> for eons with humans, right? Not recently, but you you get it back. You know, you get the outcomes you want. You get smiles, you get laughs, you get people hugging you. You you see people coming alive. You know, the researchers want to hear other outcomes. And right. are there ones that you've measured? I mean, from a holistic standpoint, outcome? Sure. Oh, sure. I mean, I want to go way back because that was, I just, there's so many... Uh, details to stories. Um, but back in 2003, um, that study came out from the Einstein College of Medicine about leisure activities and delaying the onset of dementia. And um, I, I remember calling up doc, the one of the researchers, Dr. Vergesi, and going, Dr. Vergesi, can you um, come and research us? I'm seeing anecdotal evidence of these adults with it, with memory loss and they're learning new things. They're learning dances. They're participating. Um, they're um, re remembering that again, that embodied cognition was in full force. And he said, well, you should find someone in Minnesota. Of course, I call up Mayo Clinic and, and talk to the head person there. And he said, well, that's very interesting. That's, that would be an intervention study, but we're going after the cure. So I, but luckily, I had then met the next year, Dr. Jean Cohen, um, who became an amazing mentor, uh, along with Susan Perlstein. And um, he suggested um, when we started doing this project um, with the Wilder Foundation, with a group of um, older adults, it was, you know, using a mini mental state and uh, uh, exam and a, and a um, balance um, one, which we did. And at that point, you know, again, it was an imperfect, um, it was just, you know, done by by staff and and the the professionals there, the physical therapists and and social workers. But um we we saw a 40% decrease um just in 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 falls and also in what we thought of um as as um dementia, but it was, I think what we what I'm looking now, um, and we got an Archstone award from that. That was, you know, just to even see the difference. But what staff also said, they they saw, again, a lot of it was anecdotal, that, that delayed the progression. Um, and I yeah. think that's something that we're learning now that we can intervene. And too bad that Mayo Clinic didn't want to study us a long yeah. time ago, you know, but, yeah. but anyway, what, yeah. And say since much about then, their preventive aspects, you know, that I wish, I'm a preventive guy. It's too bad. I agree. I know you are. I know. I wish I had met you so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because we can, we can, we can change, we can change the trajectory. Not all the time. We're not, you know, there are, um, we're all mortal, but, but I've seen over the years that, um, that people are able to be creatively engaged, um, um, you know, my thing is, you know, we can always be successful in, in the moment and, and how it, it isn't always about what happened before and what we remembered is going to happen in the future, but, you know, in that moment, but the other, the, the other studies that have been done, we've got seven, um, published, um, papers in the, um, on the St. Catherine university, um, um, Sophia, um, um, platform and that's and that's those are links on our our, our website but um and so what the what the one of the couple of the papers were on our work two years in a uh, five nursing homes and um and and that again we were able to um to uh intervene with the depression um, that literally, cause that's, you know, um, and, and after a, a 24 weeks, really that we were able to, um, 
it, it no longer was, was, you know, um, trying to think of the words, you know, we were able to, uh, to um, uh, increase um, or decrease de the, the uh, depression and, and maintain that. I think that's the biggest one is maintain. It's not like, oh, just because of right after the class, but that next week. And then, and, you know, um, and again, the challenge is, you know, the grant ends and then the, the staff are back to how are they supposed to keep this programming going, you know, thus our mm -hmm. Kairos clubhouse trying to do these, this weekly thing. And then yeah. the last one that I want to share is that we did, um, um, we've been doing ongoing evaluation um, uh, with our clubhouse. Um, and again, that zoom show and, and what we, um, what we're, we're finding is that people just say they feel more connected, which I think is important and they move in new ways. This is like, 70 percent you know they move in new ways to me which is which is which is powerful because again and i'm you know you're you're the medical professional we want that right even just sitting in a someone sitting in a wheelchair if they don't move in a new way they're going to start um you know have have skin abrasions and you know it's important to even move in a wheelchair right but it's important as humans for us to it's to ironic that uh maria that uh, a paper from uh, mayo uh, the title was sitting is the new smoking so it was how sedentary being sedentary it puts you at risk for everything so this is very intuitive excellent outcomes you know and working with gene and others uh Boy, we miss him, don't we? Yeah. Uh, and and uh, this, um, I, I don't know, this uh, this has been very exciting for me. I, I'm Danielle, and I, I won't speak for you, but I know how you feel about it. And uh, this, uh, this has just been fantastic. And I consider you a pioneer. I consider you a, <clears throat> a champion for our poor humanity. And, uh, you know, I, I'm so happy to be on a, in a couple of organizations with you and, uh, even even on virtual when we have a virtual meeting, I I feel your energy, you know. Thank you, both of you. Thank you so much. It's just such a delight to be in this co conversation, and 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 I really and I'm honored. I'm really honored. Thank you. Oh, so oh, yeah. you know, it's so inspiring to see someone who obviously loves their work is fully in their life's purpose, and is just like to see someone so in the moment and filled with such joy. It, it does my heart good. So thank you for, for joining us today. Um, you were the highlight of, of Lyceum 2018 for me. Um, I don't know if Roger remembers this, but I was video videoing different uh, presentations and I left the camera running so I could join the dance. So you'll see me in the one video of Lyceum. I'm like, okay, I might get in trouble, but I don't care. I'm dancing. <laughs> so go with, go with your heart, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So where can people go to, to learn more about your work? Can you give us a website? Sure. The, yeah. Easiest is our website. It's Kairos Alive, one word, no caps, K-A-I-R-O-S-A-L-I-V-E dot O-R-G, kairosalive.org. And I think if you just, if you Google that, we, we come up um, uh, and it's easy to find. And, um, and please, um, our club, our Kairos Clubhouse is is free. We keep on writing grants to make that possible. Um, we love it when people join us from all over. Um, and so, if you contact us, there's a way. Um, uh, uh, you know, email at info at i n f o f o at kairosalive.org and say you're interested. And uh, we do some protection around Zoom because we want people to feel safe. But um, we would love to. Um, have you join us? All right, uh, Doc on, Roger on, and I will Thursday. see you in the clubhouse. <laughs> yeah. Well, well we're taking gonna... a little break this month because I'm going to go traveling, but then I'll be back. But okay, yeah, right. um, yes, yes, well, and and also just, just honored. I want to say honored to be in organizations too, and I'm excited. Um, get to the first first live meeting or the in person meeting, but um, yes, uh, you know, I think. And, and find your look, you know, there are people dancing everywhere. Just make sure, I, I just want to say to people, it's not like you have to have a certain outfit to dance in or, you know, it's whatever you, you're you humming and moving to is 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 dance. Uh, you know, it's a dance. It's your own dance or playing on the radio or showing up at a, 
outdoor dance party um, um, or dancing with your loved one in chairs together, just holding hands. Well, there you have it. You heard it from uh, the the national resource uh, uh, in my mind. Take care of yourself while you travel, safe travels. Come back with more stories. And I have no doubt that we're going to get together again. Uh, I know that uh, this will be an excellent session and one that's going to be valuable, but I want to hear more. And I look forward to being with you in person again. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you both. Happy New Year. Happy New, New Year. Year. You've been listening to The Bright Side of Longevity with host and preventive medicine physician and award-winning author, Dr. Roger Landry, and co-host, nationally board-certified positive psychology and mindfulness coach, Danielle Pailly. If you like the show, please rate and review, and be sure to click to follow. Follow.